In this video, we will be going over what might be the best camera for YouTube. What's up everybody, I'm Jake McHugh and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews and test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you want to achieve. If this is something that may interest you, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. For a while, I have been looking for a second camera option for my content creation and YouTube needs and I decided to settle on the Sony a6400 and I want to explain as to why I chose this camera and my experience with this camera so far. If you have been following this channel for a while, you know that I'm a big user of Panasonic cameras and that is for good reason but I wanted to try something different. While Panasonic makes amazing cameras and offers a lot of features for the money, there is one major flaw of their cameras and that has always been the autofocus. Now you don't need autofocus to create obviously, but there is something to be said about being able just to sit down in front of the camera and be able to start shooting right away. So let's jump into the specs of this camera. Starting off with the price, you can get this camera brand new for around $900 for just the camera body and around $1,000 if you wanna get it with the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. As always, I recommend buying news when possible, as you will save a little bit of money when going this route. This camera rocks a 24.2 megapixel APS-C size sensor and has 425 autofocus points. This is still the same sensor that is used in the A6300 and the A6500, but this has faster processing speeds as an improvement. For video, the image quality is great as this is a camera with a 6K sensor that downscales to 4K and you can see the image that it's creating right now. This camera can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second at 60 or 100 megabits per second, and it can shoot at this bit rate for 24 frames per second as well. When it comes to HD, it can shoot up to 120 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, along with 24, 30, and 60 frames up to 50 megabits per second. I highly recommend shooting at the highest bit rate you can for the frame rate you want, as this will help the footage from breaking down when color grading in post. For photos, it has a burst rate up to 11 frames per second, so if you're shooting sports or movement, this will help a little. There is a new built-in interval recording feature which is used for time lapse and this is handy for both photographers and vloggers as you won't need to go out and get an intervalometer. Along with this, you can adjust the auto exposure sensitivity for your time lapse as well. With the S&Q settings on this camera, you can have it where it converts your time lapse into video in camera as well as automatically turn your 120 frames per second footage into slow-mo. While the quality won't be as good as if you were to do this in post, this could be helpful when shooting on the go because you could see how the footage turned out right away. This camera is able to connect over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC, and you can transfer your photos and videos straight to your phone with the Sony Imaging Edge app. I find this really useful for social media purposes like Instagram or TikTok when I need a quick turnaround. Battery life is said to be a tad improvement on this camera, but I can't speak for this as I have never used the prior models, but I can tell you that it doesn't have the greatest battery life when coming from Panasonic cameras. Cameras. The battery is pretty small in size, so this is why, and it's supposed to get around 360 shots when shooting photos. I find that I can get about all my talking head shots for one full video before having to swap batteries, but there are many workarounds to this issue. Since the camera can be powered through USB, you can use a power bank or you can have it run off of wall power using a dummy battery. Note that using USB power could increase the chances of having your camera overheat, which has been a problem in the past for Sony cameras, so the dummy battery may be the better solution for your needs. Speaking of overheating, this camera is said to be a lot better with this issue due to its newer processor and I haven't ran into one issue yet while shooting indoors. I haven't shot much outside yet in warmer conditions due to it's kind of still being cold here in Wisconsin. When using this camera outside, I didn't have any issues on not being able to see the screen once I turned on the sunny weather option on the monitor settings. This was an issue when shooting in 4K in the past on Sony cameras, but was solved with this model. For build quality and form factor, I've really enjoyed using this camera when shooting photos on the go. It is small in hand, but it has a solid feel, and I use the Sigma 16mm f1.4 the most, and I like the images I get with this setup for its compact size. The camera body itself only weighs 403 grams or 14 ounces, and it is under 120 millimeters or 4.5 inches in length. If you pair this with the kit lens at 116 grams or 4 ounces, you have a very small rig that almost could fit in your hoodie pocket that has a full frame equivalent focal length of 24 to 70 millimeter. The setup would make for a vlogger's dream, but it isn't quite there due to its lack of IBIS, but more on this later. You can only have up to five function buttons, but considering the size of the camera, this really isn't that bad. On the back of the camera, we have the biggest, newest feature of this camera, which is the flip up screen, and this is really handy when shooting videos like this or vlogging. When it first came out, there was a lot of heat as any mic that would mount on the hot shoe would be blocking the screen 
but Small Rig made this a simple $20 fix with a plate that allows you to mount your mic on the side. This screen is tap to focus capable, so if you want to lock focus on a subject, you could. I do find this as a pain sometimes because I will bump it on accident, especially when I'm using it on my gimbal, and then my autofocus will be off when I need it. Now let's touch on some of the drawbacks of this camera. One of the biggest features this camera lacks is the IBIS or in-body image stabilization. This makes it harder to get smoother footage when shooting handheld or vlogging, and it makes it where you have to rely on optical stabilization, though this isn't the cure-all. To show you this, let's go outside where I will shoot three different clips with different setups. That way you can determine if you can vlog with this camera or not. Alrighty, so what we have here is the kit lens, the 16 to 50 millimeter 3.5 to 5.6 with OSS or optical steady shot. And I just want to show you guys what this looks like with the camera not having any IBIS or in-body image stabilization and we're having some lens stabilization. So all the stabilizing being done here is with the lens, just the little kit lens that comes with it. It's like a really nice small pancake zoom and it makes for a really nice light setup for when vlogging like this. Um, it's actually really, really nice. And I'm just using this on my uh, little tabletop tripod right here. So I'm hoping this gives you an idea of how shaky the footage looks due to not having IBIS with this camera and having a stabilized lens. Now what we'll do is I'll throw on my favorite lens with this camera, and that is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4, and that lens doesn't have any stabilization. So I will show you guys what that looks like in a vlogging situation next. Alrighty, what you see here is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4, and I have an ND filter on it right now, and I'm shooting at F2, and I have my ND filter as the darkest as it can go due to the fact that this lets in a lot of light. My ISO is down all the way at 200. I'm shooting in Sin 4 right now. But as you can see, this gives you a lot blurrier background, gives you that more kind of cinematic look compared to the kit lens. But the downsides to this lens is that it is a little heavier. It's not too bad. It's actually still a pretty nice light setup with the mic, the camera body, and the lens. And it doesn't have any image stabilization whatsoever. So there's probably a lot of shake as you can see in this shot right here um i mean even with the kit lens there's still a lot of shake in my opinion and that's due to this camera not having any ibis or in-body image stabilization so this is what it looks like in a vlogging scenario if you were to use a non-stabilized lens Alrighty, so this is the last setup here and basically this is what the best looking smoothest setup that you can get with this camera when vlogging but it comes with the downside. So the setup here is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4, basically shooting at all the same settings as I did in the last clip with that setup there. But I threw it on my gimbal, which is the Crane V2, which you can pr find pretty affordably nowadays. But the downside to this is the weight, another battery that you have to worry about. And it's just kind of bigger, you know, more people are gonna look at you a little funny. So you can get smooth footage out of this, but it comes at the cost of having to use a gimbal due to not having any IBIS, which Sony's IBIS is a lot to be desired to begin with. And stabilized lenses can only do so much when you don't have any IBIS. So if you want to kind of get as smooth as GH5 when vlogging, you kind of got to use a gimbal, which is, it, it's kind of a pain, but you can achieve smooth, nice looking uh, image out of the camera. And the nice thing about this is that you don't have to worry about autofocus at all. It's pretty great. And when you pair the Sigma on it, you get that really nice blown out background. You get a really nice kind of cinematic looking image. And it just really, really works well in low light or interiors as well. So this is the last setup here. Let's uh, hop back into the studio. So as you can see, it does struggle a little bit with not having IBIS, but this becomes a non-factor if you're in a studio setup like I am here and shooting on a tripod. You could get away with vlogging maybe if you don't shoot while walking around. And if you use a tabletop tripod and have the camera either sit on the ground or on a table in different locations throughout the vlog. Sony does have the a6600, which does have the same flip up screen like this camera and IBIS. But from the footage I have seen, it really didn't look like much of an improvement compared to this camera without IBIS. And I mostly shoot on sticks here in the studio, so it wasn't really necessary for me to make that jump in price for that camera. Another drawback is the rolling shutter, and this is most apparent when shooting movement. When you are panning the camera, objects that are straight will get a jello-like effect to them, and this is more obvious when you're shooting at higher frame rates that require that faster shutter speed. Again, this becomes a non-issue when shooting on a tripod. While we get some new color profiles like HLG from the 
the full frame line. The 8-bit isn't the greatest on this camera compared to other brands, and it can break down easier when color grading. The best thing to do for this is to get the look that you want as close as you can in camera. That way it's only minor tweaking in post. Overall, I do like the experience I have had with this camera so far. And while we didn't get any major upgrades firmware wise from prior models, Sony did solve the no flip up screen and the heating issues from the prior models in this camera. The flip up screen is a step in the right direction for Sony users in my opinion, and it's only a matter of time that Sony does something like this with its full frame line hopefully. Given with its great reliable autofocus and now with having that flip up screen, it makes for a very nice user friendly experience for content creators. I wanted a second camera that could live on my one stand for here in the studio. That way I could just move it into position, sit down in front of, check my framing with the flip up screen and then press record and not have to worry about any focusing issues or anything else and just focus more on the content or story at hand. If you are someone who just shoots mostly locked off talking heads like this, I don't really think there's another camera out on the market that makes it as easy as this camera does in this price range. Now this doesn't mean that I'm done with my GH5 because I'm not. All the B-roll that you will see moving forward will still be shot on that camera because of what I can do creatively while shooting handheld, and that just makes it too hard to replace for my workflow. So that's going to do it for this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit the bell. That way you get notified when I drop future videos just like this one here. And last but not least, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.